Jake's first elk hunt. This is a cow tag. I'm gonna walk up here behind the uh, little cabin that we're staying at. This is where I got it, so kinda got the special hookup.
fell? She fell. You think so? She, she was standing there and she tumbled forward. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. She fell. Did she, did she, did she go down? I was looking at her. Mm. I can't see her anymore. She fell forward and they all took off. No, no, I saw her. I saw her kind of. She was wobbling there for a minute. Oh, yeah. Alright, thanks for watching uh, KK's Elk Hunt. Uh, first of all, we wanted to just kind of close out the video uh, just because we didn't have really time. Uh, when we filmed it, it was a little too dark and we really needed to get back to uh, the cabin and go get the side-by-side -side so we could actually uh, take her out of the field. Um, just to give you guys a little bit of background information is we were hunting a private ranch that I guided on, but it did have public land access, so we're really hunting really close to the public line boundary um, and we mostly hunt bulls but uh, really good elk herds so really good chance for KK to get her first elk um, without having so much hunting pressure um, and so leading into that do you want to talk about real quick why you chose to shoot that certain cow or take that certain cow yeah so when my cow came out of the timber um it was obvious to both of us that something was wrong with one of her legs and she was sort of can't really see it very well in the video um till after my first shot but she was sort of limping on one of her legs and so we thought um that she was she was a good one to take um just for the sake of her being injured and didn't didn't look like she would was gonna fend well during the the winter months so that was when we decided she was the one yep so she kind of had like a kind of like a hoof rot uh not really sure if it was hoof rot but just kind of a club foot we'll put some pictures up so you guys can see what that looks like And then we also kind of just want to add some questions just to, um, because she was a first time elk hunter and just kind of maybe share that with some of you guys. Maybe there's somebody that is going on their first elk hunt or is thinking about going on their first elk hunt or is maybe not a hunter and is thinking about going on that first hunting adventure. So could you discuss how you went from a hunter or a non-hunter, I'm sorry, to somebody who now hunts and hunts pretty high? Um, avidly? I would say that um, obviously that transition happened when I met Heath. Um, definitely was, I would say, even almost anti-hunter um, in high school and through college just sort of not knowing anything about it and thinking that it was just people going out in the woods and killing Bambi essentially, um, which is obviously not the case at all. And then Heath and I met and he sort of took the time to explain to me like why he loved hunting and why he hunted and um, just did a really good job of explaining all of all of that and why hunting is actually a good thing and um, it's a great tradition sort of a thing. Um, so then 
we got me tags and I started hunting. Right on. Basically. <laughs> All right, so uh, kind of leading into our next question is uh, kind of discuss your the expectation versus reality um, coming from a non-hunter to a hunter. Uh, what was your expectation versus the reality in terms of not only the general size of the elk mm -hmm. and the animal itself, but also um, hunting elk? What was your um, expectation versus reality? And what was your um, first impression the first time you saw a bull elk in the wild? <laughs> um, I think you can see it in the video. Pretty shocked. Um, you don't realize how big of animals they are. Like I grew up, my grandparents had a ranch. Like we grew up around horses, which are big animals. But um, like as far as being around like actual like wild animals, um, like deer, uh, pronghorn, that sort of thing. So elk are huge. So I wasn't really expecting that um, in terms of like the actual expectations of hunting. I didn't know what to expect. I think I had tagged along on a couple of your hunts, um, like in the later seasons, you know, public land, uh, just a lot of hiking and stuff. So like sitting in a blind was kind of different sort of a thing. Um, and then just like Heath had been out there guiding. So like the stories he was telling me was like, he was calling bulls in for his hunters and that sort of thing. So being that I was hunting a cow, I didn't know how all of that was going to play out. Um, didn't know if they were going to show up or not. Well, I mean, we could have sat in that blind all night and nothing happened, but it's just not the way it worked. Thank goodness. Right. <clears throat> all right, so uh, just to kind of end it out, um, do you have three tips? Let's keep it to three. Okay. Three tips for anyone, female, male, um, going on their first elk hunt. Let's, let's keep it to elk. Okay. And they're going on their first elk hunt out west. Um, and this can either be on private or on public land since you've done both, both now. <laughs> um, number one, I guess it sort of depends. If you're hunting public, I would say number one would be be in shape because we've done some public land hunting for elk and you've got to be in shape. You've got to be in shape to find them. And then once you find them, if you're lucky enough to fill a tag, you have to be in good enough shape to get it out of... <laughs> the mountains which is not easy so that would be number one be in shape even if you think you're in good shape get in better shape so that would be number one two would be um have good gear like gear that fits you gear that you are comfortable in and that you like wearing um like not so much like backpacks and stuff like for me specifically it's been like pants that are comfortable socks that fit well in my boots like those sorts of things things that I feel like I can climb over rocks and trees and all that sort of stuff um because when you're uncomfortable it makes hunting so miserable in my opinion <laughs> so that would be two and then three would be um I would say like the the mental game of it like my expectations for this actual hunt is so different than what I expect now going into my public elk like my public land elk hunts because we went we sat in the blind they came out like it was just it doesn't happen like that in our experience when you're on public um you're not just like walking a mile to a blind sitting and waiting it's all day hiking looking being quiet sort of thing so um like mentally preparing yourself for that and trying to stay positive when you don't see animals and hear animals um, so definitely like a mental thing and to not get down on yourself and have realistic expectations for how things are going to go down. Right on. Well, thank you for sharing that. And, uh, thanks for watching the video guys. Um, pretty fun hunt. We know the footage isn't phenomenal, but, uh, it was like four years ago. We did have a little bit better camera gear and equipment now. So yeah. we're able to get a little bit better stuff. But if you like any of our videos and you like um, just the stuff from the content we put up, just uh, like and subscribe, and uh, that will let you know whenever we put up some new videos, which we definitely have some new stuff coming out soon, so uh, be on the lookout for that. Yeah. Any last words? Thanks for watching.